Welcome to our channel, The Indoor Nomads. Today we're going to show you how to travel to the tropics, the Philippines, Belize, with just one carry-on sized bag. We're going to one bag it to the Philippines. And something a little special here, this bag also has a complete set of snorkeling gear in it. So let's take it apart and I'll show you what's inside first. Here's an overview of everything that I bring to the tropics. I spent six weeks in the Philippines with this setup, no problem. So we've got clothing in two packing cubes. I'll break that down in a moment. We have the toiletry kit that stays in the hotel room. This is back stock for uh, my everyday carry toiletry kit, which is much smaller. This is my day bag. We'll break down everything in my day bag. Of course, when you're in the tropics, you want to go diving or snorkeling. So I have all of my snorkeling gear, a pair of travel fins, body suit, mask, snorkel, and a day bag, dry bag. So all of this fits into my one backpack. There's one piece of gear more important than anything else. That's good pair of sandals. I don't even bring sneakers with me. I bring a pair of socks to go with these for the airplane ride because it gets a little cold. These are your friends. There's no use for sneakers or socks, the most useless things I have in the tropics. So get yourself a good pair of sandals. Break your feet into them before you leave. These happen to be Merle's. They love my feet. My feet love them. I wear these everywhere. Don't worry about fancy restaurants. Everyone wears sandals, even top-end restaurants in the Philippines. You'll be welcomed with a good pair of sandals. Make sure what they're what I call hiking grade. You just don't want a, a random flip-flop because you'll be doing a lot of walking. You want a good sole on them. You don't want to be afraid to walk down a wet street in them with who knows what running off into the gutters water-wise. Good pair of sandals, worth their weight in gold. Absolute must-have. Of course, I don't pack these into the bag. They're always on my feet. This is the backpack itself. Empty bag right now. You'll notice a couple features. This is a dry seal dry bag. In fact, nothing's in it but air right now. Um, and good way to test the seal. So I like to take a little ferries called Bangkot boats between islands in the Philippines. This keeps all of my gear and my clothing very dry. It's got a couple features that are absolutely critical. One is a very good suspension system. Actually, it's not much of a suspension system, um, but it has a waistband, which I find very critical, with a little padding for your lower back, in addition to the backpack straps. This is the most comfortable backpack I've really ever had. Um, it gets its rigidity by filling it with contents, so it's a little less comfortable when empty. But once full, very rigid, sits off your back very nicely. Um, this is small enough that if you don't overpack it, if it still bends here, um, it's 22 and a half, 21 and a half inches long. So it will fit in a regulation carry-on, airline carry-on. Overhead cabinet, no problem. It's got a nice little zip pocket that becomes a drink bag. I really like this bag. This has served me really well. I don't even remember the brand name. Bought it off Amazon for you know, less than $50. I think it was like $39. Very good bag. I have noticed the, um, don't count on this keeping your phone dry. Uh, these zippers aren't quite waterproof, but the bag itself has been fantastic. So let's see how everything fits in there. Let's start with things you absolutely need every day. Okay, first up, especially for places like the Philippines, you need to pack your own toilet paper. Emergency supply of toilet paper. A lot of public restrooms do not have toilet paper. So you quickly learn that the two most important things to carry with you are a small pack of toilet paper and a small hand towel. This is a little camping towel. Um, you, I put this in my back left pocket, that in my back right pocket, uh, and then you're ready to go, take care of business, dry your hands afterwards because paper products are not to be taken for granted. Okay, moving along on the daily carry, you need a floppy sun hat. Uh, this one will fold down real well. I think this is a Columbia, but I'm not terribly brand loyal there. Then we've got my day-to-day -to -day toiletries. Um, these are ones I keep with me all the time. A couple wet wipes. Um, I'll go through the contents of this separately. You absolutely need a pair of sunglasses. In this case, these are prescription sunglasses, so they act as a backup to my primary care pair. Um, 
and if you're going to be island hopping around the Philippines, you need some sort of band to secure them. So a sunglass band. I also have a band for my primary glasses. Um, this is a little catch-all. Um, this is basically my entire allotment of what if. Um, a lot of people overpack items just in case. These are the four items that I keep usually uh, on the outside of my pack. Tiny little towel, just because the other one will get dirty. Um, a little flashlight. Flashlight is a must, especially in the Philippines and the islands in the Philippines. Power outages are a regular thing and sometimes are in the middle of the night. Um, a bottle opener. Can't be, leave home without one. A whistle, just so we can found e find each other in crowds. Uh, and in my case, this is a tiny little screwdriver kit specifically for eyeglasses. So both tips come off. There's a tiny little tip on each side just in case you have a little bit of a glasses emergency. And always keep some chapstick on me. So those are my absolute everyday. I always have those on my person. Um, also in the day bag, um, I have this. This is a universal wall power adapter with USB ports. So you can put whatever you need as an input and you can run the slides and get whatever type of power adapter you need. Little button on this side to collapse it. Um, very handy, not only for countries with 240 volts, but this is also my primary way of powering my electronics, recharging them. It's got four USBs, and that's a USB-C even. So if you have a newer laptop, that's the way to go. Um, very nice. Okay, all of these things, actually the whole table's worth of things, fit into the small backpack. Any small crushable backpack will do. Um, I don't like bags that go across your shoulder. Um, I feel after walking with those for a few days, you get back pain for sure. Uh, this particular one's a Rick Steves day bag. I like it because it's very soft. You can put uh, roll up a rain jacket, put it in there, and it'll act as a pillow. It's got just enough pockets to keep things organized. Um, any little day bag will do. Just keep in mind, you will absolutely need to fit it both under the seat as a personal item in the U.S., or... In a lot of places, you won't be allowed a second personal item, so you'll need to be able to stuff it into your main bag as well. Okay, now let's talk about things we need for the airplane. Um, I like to keep a belt. This one's actually a foam flexible belt, so it's very comfortable in any pair of pants. I'll also note that my waistline will change a little bit as we travel, depending on uh, how well we're eating and how much exercise we're getting. So uh, something that, with a little flex in it, stays comfortable even if I'm between sizes, so to speak. So... One belt, especially um, handy for money belts, hanging money belts on later. Although I honestly, I pretty much only wear this on days that we're out and about or moving between locations. For the tropics, I carry one pair of socks, and these are basically only for the airplane. Um, nice pair of wool socks. Uh, they don't get too smelly. They still are warm if they're a little wet. Um, one pair of socks is all I bring. A pair of sh uh, socks and sneakers are useless in the high humidity. You'll just sweat through them if you're anything like me. So one pair of socks for the airplanes. Um, battery packs essential. I like uh, Kindle. Um, we got these bright red, actually made these bright red cases so that when they're sitting on the side table in the hotel, um, you're not going to forget them. Bright red, easy to spot. Uh, same thing for the battery case. I'd actually, if I do it over, I think I'll get a little smaller of a battery. This one's that's a lot of juice. I rarely depend on it, but you'll need something to be able to recharge your phone because you will be dependent upon your phone for a lot of things. Um, and in the kit, all the wires I need to charge my various devices. Okay, money belts. Um, this also comes right from Rick Steves' travel advice. I have a disposable wallet. This is not the wallet I use when I'm walking around the U.S. This is like a $3 wallet. Um, if it gets pickpocketed, it only has my day's cash. A lot of places you'll be going in the tropics will be cash-only economies, uh, so you might not be used to carrying around coins. This works as a nice little coin purse, uh, one of my credit cards, or maybe some cash. Um, and if it gets pickpocketed, I'm not out my passport, I'm not out my driver's license, um, I'll have backup solutions for credit cards, so no big deal. Um, keep that in my front pocket at all times. Uh, the real assets go into one of two money belts. This might be a little bit of overkill. This one goes deep, you know, against my skin as a belly band, and it'll carry things that I 
won't need access to the bulk of my cash, my backup credit cards, backup forms of identification. Um, this one hangs inside the belt. You can pick your color so it blends in a little bit. This will have things I actually need that day, um, but want a little more discreet. So if this disappears, no big deal. I have this. Um, it's got my passport in it on days that I anticipate needing it because I don't like rummaging around my belly band. And it, uh, but it's a little more disposable than my absolute backup pair. So heaven forbid um, uh, we get robbed um, at knife point or something, uh, I'll gladly give these two things up and they'll think they have everything. But I'll still have some cash, I'll have my uh, passport card in that. I'm not completely SOL. Um, let's see, a few miscellaneous things. I've got a waterproof, this is not a Ziploc bag, it's that style, but this is for the phone. So when we're on small boat rides, I don't have to risk my phone getting wet. Um, this is another waterproof bag that, in our case, we bring our certificates of training for sailing or any other important paperwork that you might need to pertain to your vacation. So they might get wet, so they're both in bags. Moving on up, I have a lightweight rain shell. Uh, it rains a lot in the tropics, so this always lives in the day bag. Uh, when it's downpouring, you'll be happy that you have it. It's also nice cushioning. I bring a little bit of rope, a um, little bit of line uh, to act as a clothesline. You can probably get by without it, but it's nice to be able to wash your clothes in a sink and dry them out in absolutely any hotel. I have a pen. The pen is for one very specific purpose. It's filling out customs and immigration forms uh, as you fly. There's nothing worse than being stuck without a pen when you need it. Also for airplanes, cannot recommend these enough. No affiliation here, but these are the Bose QuietComfort 25s. These are noise-canceling headphones. They're actually earbuds, so they don't take up a lot of space. In the so they're in-ear noise-canceling little lithium battery pack. Lasts about 16 hours. Um, I have a little two-in-one audio adapter for when we want to listen to the same thing. Uh, the iPhone adapter, necessary evil, little charging cable. So everything I need is the one pair of headphones I bring with me. Okay, and then earlier we saw the day-use toiletry kit. This is my overflow. We bring, comparative to a lot of backpackers, a lot of toiletries with us. So um, I have my 311 bag with my fluids that I don't need day-to-day. -day. Back sock for things like wet wipes, um, emergency a spare Ziploc bag. I'll get into all this in a moment. So this will typically stay in the hotel room. The other one goes with me every day. Uh, if you have a beard, um, you'll want something a little fancier than a disposable razor blade. So in this particular case, I've got my little lithium power miniature beard trimmer. Works really well for trimming and shaving. Very convenient. It's kind of a luxury item I like to have. Couple big black garbage bags. These will act as ponchos, or if you get stuck with wet laundry in high humidity areas, you can temporarily pack them in plastic to keep your other laundry clean. A couple of black garbage bags are must have. And then a water bottle. Choice of water bottle. Water bottle is very important when you're in some of these less than cleanly places. You want something that protects the entire drinking orifice. So open that up. Everything that your lips touch won't be rolling around in the back of a taxi. Locks up very nice. I like having the carbiner hook on this one so I can actually haul it in the front of my backpack. This is Thermos brand. Uh, I wish this one were a little uh, higher capacity. This is a little less than a liter. I would go with the one liter variant if they made it. So that's it. That's my everyday carry. Basically everything other than clothing. Okay, these are the insides of the toiletry bags. Yes, toiletry bags. Um, we have a small bag that I carry in my backpack every day in my day bag, and then I have a slightly bigger bag that is for evening items or just back stocking our day bag. So let's see what we've got here. Okay, first off, my 311 bag. Um, I carry three things in liquids. I like these little go tubes. Easy to get the last little drop out, easy to refill. This is uh, what they call an 18-in-1. It's marketing for you. Dr. Bronner's Broner's Pure Castile Soap. Here's the bottle I refill it from whenever we get home. It's a all-purpose soap. I'll use it as a shampoo, a conditioner. 
I'll use it to wash my clothes, wash my body. Um, you know, most soap is the same stuff. The, the differences between, you know, a shampoo and a hand soap is usually which fat they use inside. So this one's just a pure soap. Um, I like the peppermint flavor because, you know, as you travel, especially in the tropics, you'll get a little smelly. So it's really nice, uh, especially if you don't have time to give a good thorough clean to your clothes. A little bit of that in a sink and, uh, and they'll be at least not offensive smelling when you're traveling on a tight bus or an airplane. So number one is a good soap. Uh, number two is a sunscreen or sun cream, as they say in the East. Um, this is particularly important uh, in places like the Philippines where you just cannot find sunscreen. So I have a big bottle of sunscreen. Um, what you will find in the Philippines will be outrageously expensive and it will have skin whiteners in it. Um, I didn't want any of that. I just want a simple SPF. This I think is no ad sunscreen. And my third one is a hand lotion. Uh, you get dry hands, especially in the dry air on airplanes. So uh, lotion there and a very small thing of bug spray. This, this will last me weeks in the tropics. And of course, starter tube of toothpaste. You can pick up near, more toothpaste anywhere in the world. Those are the things that go in my 311 bag to get through security. Okay, let's talk medications. There are a couple things everyone should have regardless of your needs. In this case, a laxative and an antidiuretic. So basically generic Imodium. Um, a lot of people pack a whole bottle. Um, you don't need that many. Um, you'll be able to find resupplies. I mean, if you're miserable, this will be good for six days. If you're miserable for six days, you'll be able to find a refill in country. Um, but these are absolutely essential. Even if you have a, a rock solid gut, uh, there will be days, maybe maybe just days that you're stuck traveling on a bus without a, a toilet in it, that uh, proactively taking some Imodium will make your day a lot easier. Um, and you know, x lax even if you've never needed it before in your life, when you need it, you need it. Um, so those two, sometimes I'll cheat and bring a few more of these because I use them proactively. So that's must-have medications. And this pill kit and this pill kit, I have everything else. Your needs may vary, but everything else that I might need medication-wise. Um, in my case, a little Benadryl, a little aspirin, a little formotidine for upset stomachs keep the stomach acid under control, um, and a sleep aid, um, melatonin, natural melatonin in my case. So just mixed pill bags. Um, I don't think you'll have a problem traveling through security with these, as long as the pills have their labels on them. I haven't had a problem. Nobody's ever asked me, hey, what's that pill? But I do make sure they're at least imprinted with aspirin or what have on them. So essentials. Um, small bag of tissues, not necessary if you're uh, used to using a hanky, but I like having some tissues around. Um, chapstick, I have a backup chapstick actually. I travel with two, I know, it's ridiculous. Um, let's see, other items. Then my day pack of Q-tips. You can resupply Q-tips anywhere in the world. Every little corner store will have them. Um, so I'll carry at least enough to get me through one day. Um, sometimes I'll back stock another small container of them. A uh, toothbrush, of course. I like these folding ones. You should probably get used to dental floss, even if you use floss picks. It's just so much more compact to carry around. Nothing's worse than having something stuck between your teeth for the rest of the day because you went out adventurous and had some adventurous street food. Um, dental floss goes with me all day, every day. This is an interesting one, earplugs. Um, this was a recent addition to the kit after we were on a small boat with a, a hazardously, a hazardous, we're on a small boat with a very hazardous uh, engine. It was an automotive engine and a boat was very loud. It gave you a migraine. I was worried about hearing loss. Had my fingers in my ears and wasn't enough. So we now always travel with a pair of these. Uh, this is not to replace noise canceling headphones, which are great for comfort, but when you need these to be safe, you need them. So I carry a couple disposable earplugs with me. Okay, over to the right, this is mostly back stock. So I have extra rolls of this camping toilet paper that goes in the evening bag. Uh, extra emergency, if you like to drink especially, this is your best friend. If you're having trouble hydrating, put this in a glass of water. It's a powdered electrolyte and it's got a huge multivitamin boost. Um, 
this is basically a guaranteed cure to a hangover. So keep a back stock of those. Here's my toilet paper. This actually container is a dispenser for it as well. It'll feed out through the edge. That goes with me every day. Uh, one wet wipe. When you need them, you need them. So we'll keep those over there. Uh, this is a little Gold Bond medicated powder. Quite frankly, this is for swamp ass. Uh, if you've ever had a chafed backside on a hot bus, you'll know this is worth its weight in gold. One stick of non-gel, because you don't want to have to stiff it in your stiff, fit it in your 311 bag. Non-gel deodorant and or antiperspirant. Um, this is what I use. I make sure I always leave with a fresh stick. Um, if you're picky like me, it's going to be tough to find your brand all over the world. So I just always start my adventures with a fresh stick. I can get six weeks out of one of these. One more medication. Lactose intolerant. So we take some lactate. So that's toiletries for around the world. I can go uh, easily six weeks on this much. I'm sorry. I forgot one more item I didn't talk about. This tiny little thing is everything I bring for a first aid perspective. Not a comprehensive kit. But when you find yourself bleeding in the tropics, two hours from the nearest hospital, you'll want a few things. Wound closure tape, uh, strips, uh, medicated gauze, uh, a few band-aids. Not comprehensive, but has come in handy every single time I've gone off the beaten path. So keep it light, keep it with the essentials. You don't have to replace a hospital here, you just have to have enough to keep your wounds, clean out your wounds, should you get a little scrape, uh, and get to a clinic. That's it. This is what we're bringing in terms of clothing. I've spent six weeks in the Philippines with this, a couple weeks in Belize with this. It works really well. Um, so first off, material. I do not bring cotton. None of these items are cotton. Uh, cotton feels great until you sweat through it and it will not dry out on its own. Uh, modern synthetic fabrics. If you remember synthetics from the 90s, forget about them. These are so much better. Uh, these you can sweat in and they'll dry out while they're still on your body. It's the most important thing um, They also fold or in my case roll incredibly small. They're very thin fabrics very light fabrics great for the heat So let's jump right in You'll see three pairs of pants. These are two pairs of shorts and one pair of long pants The long pants are really just for the airplane ride um, but you still need to be pretty thin because remember, even though you'll only be wearing these for the airplane ride, long haul aircraft get very cold. Um, you want them to be thin because you'll be carrying around, carrying them around your backpack the rest of the time. Um, the chief fact factors I look for in a pair of pants is a zippering pocket for security, preferably on your thigh. This makes the pocket easily accessible when you're strapped into your airplane seat. So I'll keep phone in there, headphones, whatever you need. I don't have to do the little squirm to be able to get to my pockets when I'm in the airplane seat. The rest of the time, this uh, folds very flat because it's a very thin material. I don't even know the brand on these. Royal Robin. I think I picked these up at an REI. Um, they're structured knee pants, so they're intended for outdoor adventure, but this charcoal finish makes them almost pass as dress pants if you ever have to go to a fancy restaurant or impress the in-laws. Um, they'll also double as my formal wear should I need it. The other two pants uh, are shorts. Um, I only wear two because I one will be the ones I'm wearing, the other ones will be wet from the previous day's laundry. Um, and actually, uh, they don't need to be washed that often. You can make it the better part of a week on a single pair of pants. As they say, don't change your clothes, change your city. Uh, these also have the thigh zippering thigh pocket. I really like that feature. Um, make sure they fit you comfortably um, and that they're thin. These ones also have a zippering back pocket um, because we're going to roll these up in a second. I'll show you how small they fit. I do have a third pair. I occasionally will travel with three pairs of shorts, but I've learned two is all it really takes. Uh, so those are the bottoms for the tropics. On the tops, um, again, no cotton. Talk about t-shirts. I like t-shirts. Other people like collared shirts. Do whatever you like. Uh, you want them thin, you want them breathable. These are Omniwix by Columbia. The only complaint is they uh, don't hold up to washings terribly well. They tend to pill very easily. Um, but I like the solid colors. I'm not a pattern sort of person. So I'll bring three, maybe four shirts in the t-shirt variety. 
I like different colors just because that way I remember which ones are clean, which ones are dirty when they're marginal. Um, so I'll know I'm on a red shirt day or a silver shirt day, what have you. And then here's an item you might not think you'll need in the Philippines. This is a long sleeve shirt. And this will count for formal wear should you need to go to a nicer restaurant. I wear this on the airplane with this. Um, the critical feature here is also that it's synthetic, it's wrinkle free. Um, and you know, air dries on the hanger very nicely. This is, I don't think I've ever ironed this and it comes out very flat every time. Um, this has long sleeves, which are good sun protection. They're a little, but it's also got breathable pockets built into it. Um, so very comfortable, even in the heat. This is, I think they're uh, technically fishing wear, I think they call it, I'm not sure. Um, but the critical feature here is that the sleeves will roll up after you put it on and strap up a little bit. So you're, it acts as a short sleeve, semi-formal, good for all occasions. I'll wear this on the airplane as well, just to stay a little bit warmer. Um, and then I'll bundle it up and save it for occasions where I either need the sun protection or um, need something a little more formal. So those are my shirts. Four shirts, yeah. You can get by on four shirts. I sweat like a pig, and I can get by on four shirts. If you have a little more room, the first thing I would add would be another t-shirt, though. Shorts, you can go days without washing. As long as you're not too much of a slob, they'll look okay. Shirts, eh, not so much. Okay, underwear. This will sound like a plug. I swear they don't sponsor me. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. Ex officio? These are probably the best underwear money can buy. If you know a better one, please let me know, because they're worth every penny. They roll into nothing, so very thin material. These are the only underwear i found that will dry while I'm still wearing them, believe it or not. They're antimicrobial. They don't smell that bad, even if you've been wearing the same pair for mm, several days in a row. Um, and they double as swim trunks. They're nicely structured, so you can go swim in these. Nobody looks at you funny. Uh, they work really well. So I don't pack a pair of swim trunks. I'll just designate a, one of these colors as my swim trunks for the week. And the other ones get cycled out for the laundry. Of course, when you travel with this little amount of clothing, you wind up doing laundry every third day. But you just use a little soap, put it in the sink. Or you can stomp on them in the shower if your uh, hotel room has a nice clean shower. Hang them up to dry. These dry incredibly fast. I swear, even in like 95% humidity in the Philippines, these will dry in about... 40 minutes just hang drying so very handy now I will show you how I roll these away and pack them I'm gonna fit all of these clothes into one or two of these little packing cubes um, these are a godsend when it comes to fitting everything in your luggage we're going to roll these clothes up not fold them we're gonna roll them up and fit them into this is an Amazon basics very affordable little packing cube don't have to be anything special so that's the goal. Let's get started. Let's start with a pair of these underwear I talked about earlier. Um, I like to fold them over once. Make sure you get four levels, four rolls, four layers of the belly band, and then just roll them up. They're basically, when you're done, the same size as the belly band, just a little thicker. Fold them over once. There's a pair of underwear. No problem there. Okay, shorts. These are the Patagonia shorts I absolutely love. The key here is to get, like with the underwear, four layers of the belly band together all in one place. When you do it this way, the rest of the, uh, the shorts are about the same width as the belly band. Flatten them out and roll them. Always roll the belly band first because I care more about how flat the legs are on these and the thing on the outside winds up being the most flat so there's a pair of shorts ready to go no problems okay t-shirts just because i know these particular packing cubes pack well with a narrow tight roll i like to fold the t-shirt in thirds like so fold the sleeves in and just roll up from one end to the other and you get a real tight roll and ready to go so there's an entire change of clothes right there three little tubes now you can't go to the tropics without snorkeling you can rent gear if you want to 
uh, eh, I prefer to bring my own. And yes, all of this fits into one carry-on size piece of luggage along with everything else I need to be able to sustain myself for months in the Philippines. So, what have we got here? These are a pair of Aqua Long Hot Shot fins. I really like these fins. They're adjustable. You can pull these out so that you'll get more of an angle on the fin and a tighter kick. But here in setting one, they pack very flat, which is why I like them. And in the large size, I believe these are large, um, they're less than 22 and a half inches long. So they fit in regulation carry-on luggage. No problem. Absolutely love these. Um, these are an open heel design fin, which means more of your length is dedicated to fin. If you try fitting in a closed heel um, into your luggage, you'll find that the fin's proportionally longer since the pocket has to be longer. Um, these are semi-flexible pockets, so if you get the right size, you can wear them barefoot. I do a lot of shore diving or shore snorkeling, so I like a good pair of booties. These are little three millimeter booties, and when I travel, they go in the foot pockets so that that space isn't wasted. Uh, a nice mask. Most important thing is to have a mask that's comfortable for you. The worst thing to do is to have your first snorkeling experience with a rental mask that doesn't fit right, or has perhaps had its uh, seal dried out with age. So, you know, find a mask that you really like, that you're comfortable, won't leak on you. Very important. Then once you have it, bring it. I actually bring it in this. It's a different brand, but I bring it in this case so that I'm not going to torture the silicone uh, when it's tight, packly tight, tight, packed tightly. There's the phrase. Okay, what else do you need? It's called snorkeling, so you need a snorkel. This is nothing special. Dry top snorkel from Aqualung, one I'm very comfortable with above the purge valve, so that goes into the kit as well. And because we're in the tropics, I would sunburn very easily if it wasn't for my body glove. This is a full body. It's very thin. It's not a wetsuit. Uh, but it acts just like one for warm climates. Um, so extremely thin, covers me all the way from my ankles to the top of my neck, all the way down to my wrists. Um, dries pretty darn quickly too. Um, so I've never had a problem just air drying this, you know, rinsing it first and air driving, air drying it after going on a snorkeling trip. So all of this, plus occasionally I'll bring a little uh, dry bag, a roll top dry bag, um, you know, for any valuables or for the phone and wallet and other things you might want to bring on the dive boat um, and keep them dry. So I'll pack all of this along with my clothes and toiletries and everything else that I need um, for a long stay in the tropics. So this is how I stack the bulk of my items to fit into that tiny little carry-on dry bag. Um, I'm mostly concerned with keeping my fins flat. So in the bottom of the bag I have the two fins bottom to bottom, like so. I like that these fin, particular fins are flat. And then I use the two packing cubes of laundry, or clothing, to protect the two fins. Have those together, or actually this one, I'll sneak up a little bit and keep my face mask together. Then everything else, I fit in around it. Now, uh, right here, you're only seeing my clothing and my snorkeling gear. Of course, I also have my day bag full of items and my back stack of toiletries um, and truth is I can if I really want to disassemble everything in that bag and fit it into this bag but usually I'll have the day bag separately as is and have this and that way no bags overpacked but if uh, for example uh, flying a domestic airline between islands in the Philippines they do not let you have a personal item you have to have one bag so I will go to the trouble to take everything out of this bag and fit it into the nook and crannies um, to fit in there but this is the basic layout with that being the bottom so mask tips of the fins that way they can come out in inspection go back in if they decide to poke through your bag at security um, two clothing packing cubes miscellaneous items around the foot pockets put it together okay there's all the snorkeling equipment and clothing in the dry bag which still has plenty of space left in it it's important not to overpack your bags although let's face it it's a constant battle there's my day bag which has everything uh, that I laid out earlier in this 
and through uh, most airlines this will be fine. You'll have uh, one carry-on item and one personal item, um, but if I really need to, I can pack all everything that's in here into there, uh, and then the water bottle goes on this water bottle pouch. I'll show you what that looks like. So first, I've taken all the rigid items out of this bag um, and packed a few away. My glasses, my battery pack. I left the raincoat, floppy hat, other squishy things in this one. Took the 311 bag out because if you've been through security, you know you need to get to those quickly for the security skinning. And my toiletries out. And then I'll put all the, put all the rigid things in down the sides here. And then I'll put these in and the bag will squish down on top. There's the finished product. Everything in one carry-on sized bag. In fact, it's quite a bit narrower than regulation carry-on max size. You can go a little bit bigger and still not be one of those people that cheat the rules. We're ready to go to the Philippines. One more thing. If you're going to be staying in youth hostels, um, or now backpackers hostels or hotels, uh, you do want a, a cheap pair of shower shoes in addition to these, but we stay in, uh, we stay in hotels with private showers. Uh, we are the indoor nomads after all. Uh, we like to stay indoors, uh, so we don't need shower sandals. One pair of shoes is all it takes.